Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Root, and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to go in through my transfer tips ahead of game week 34. So it is a double game week. Obviously, I know a lot of people will be playing their free hit in this game week, but for me, I just wanted to pick out a player from each team that is doubling and then give my advice on it and whether I think that's the best option or not. Obviously, there's obvious players to go for like Saka, Salah, etc. So I'm going to be trying and be a little bit different, but stay tuned. And if you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe and smash a like on this video if you do like it. Let's get into it. Yo, listen up, Ru is stepping up the game where fantasy Premier League runs in his veins. From transfers to captains, he's always on top, guiding you through every game week nonstop. They say Ru got that Salah flow. Welcome to the channel. Enjoy the show. Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe. If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe. So first of all, before we did go into the transfer tips, I just wanted to talk about the teams that are actually doubling in game week 34. So obviously, I think if you are bringing in players this week, you're probably going to be wanting, wanting to bring in double game week players. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I don't know if it is worth probably making a move otherwise. Um, we'll start off with Arsenal. So Arsenal have a pretty good double game week of Wolves away, Chelsea at home. Wolves away can be tricky, but with the form Arsenal win at the moment, um, I cannot see that being a problem for them. Chelsea have been getting good results against some of the big teams this season. They haven't lost to Man City. They beat Spurs. They beat uh, Man United. Um, who else have they played? Liverpool. I think they've got a couple draws against Liverpool. So, yeah, Chelsea have been doing well against the bigger teams this season, but I think Arsenal being at home should win that game comfortably. So I'd say a pretty good double game week for Arsenal. Uh, Bournemouth, two away games, both in the West Midlands, Villa and Wolves. So for someone like Bournemouth, it's not the best double game week because they are both away, but um, they are teams that um, I guess are not, the, are not the best in the league. Villa are doing well at the moment and they're going to be at home in this game. So you probably fancy Villa to win that game. But I think Wolves, Bournemouth, it's a pretty open game, um, a pretty fair game. And, and I think a few Bournemouth options can, can go down well in this double game week. Crystal Palace, probably the best on paper fixtures of this double game week, but two home fixtures against West Ham and against Newcastle. Obviously, um, West Ham are not that great in the league this year, I'd say. And Newcastle are having a tough season as well with the amount of injuries they've got defensively. So maybe even a Palace forward or even a Palace defender could be good for this double game week. Everton. Two home fixtures as well, but one of them is against Liverpool in a derby and one of them against Nottingham Forest, a massive game towards the bottom of the table. So two massive games for Everton in this one. Potentially, you could argue that one Everton player, it could be an option, but we'll talk about later. Talk about that later on. Liverpool, two away games, albeit Liverpool are very, very good. So Fulham away, Fulham are not a, a, an easy team to play. They're, they're doing very well this season. And then Everton away, Derby, Goodison Park, they're going to want um, to stop Liverpool from winning the league and they're fighting for their lives. So that's going to be a tough game for Liverpool. Uh, Sheffield United with Burnley at home, a good fixture for them. And Man United away, which could also be a good fixture for them. Um, but yeah, Sheffield United are terrible. All be, although they have started to get a couple of results recently, the draw against Chelsea. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll talk about them later on. And then Wolves, two home fixtures. One of them being Arsenal, though, so Arsenal at home and then Bournemouth at home. So not bad for Wolves, but you, you can't see them getting much in that in that um, Arsenal game. And then the Bournemouth game is is open, I'd say, pretty fair. But obviously, they are the home team. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about these seven teams. Um, if you're looking at players that are not involved in the seven teams, then they'll probably check out my transfer tips videos from last week or the week before. But let's get into the double game week now. So we're going to do this in order, as I've spoke about the team. So we'll start off with Arsenal. I've got Odegaard here on the list. I think he's a player that maybe people are not talking about at the minute. A lot of people are talking about Saka, um, obviously on pens. Talking about Havertz, who's in very good form, playing number nine. Talking about the defence, how great they are. Saliba, Gabriel, maybe even David Raya. But no one, I feel like, is talking about Odegaard enough. 8.6 million. 17.7% um, .7 owned, um, which for, for me, someone, Arsenal captain, that's very, very low. Um, this season has not been his best season in terms of attacking-wise. Last season, he ended 15 goals, 8 assists. This season, so far, he's got 7 goals, 7 assists. 
But I feel like towards this end of the season and the performances he's been putting in recently, I think this could be a nice double game week for Odegaard. Like I've mentioned, the fixture for Arsenal are not the easiest on paper, I'd say. I think Wolves away is a tricky game, but if you're going to be winning the league, you've got to be going to Wolves and winning. And then Chelsea at home, who knows what Chelsea will turn up. They, they normally do turn up, though, against the, I guess, better teams, Chelsea, but who knows what's going to happen in this fixture. Overall, I do really, really like Odegaard. Whether I'd go with him above Saka, probably not. But um, if you are not looking to to have double Arsenal um, defence in this game week, then I think Odegaard is probably the best, the second best Arsenal attacker slash midfielder going forward for this double game week. Yes, there is an argument that Havertz is a better option, more attacking, more goals. But I feel like Havertz, albeit he is first choice at the minute, I do feel like he could get rested and he potentially um, might miss out because of someone like maybe Trossard, Jesus, Martinelli, whereas Odegaard, I think Odegaard will play every game now until the end of the season. And I think Havertz will as well. But I think um, if you're going to be buying someone for a double game week, you, you're going to want a guarantee of two games. And I think you get that with Odegaard, whereas Havertz, you might not get a guarantee of two game weeks. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and we'll move on to Bournemouth. So Bournemouth, there's no other player to talk about apart from Don Solanke. And I'm a bit shocked that he's not high, more highly owned. 28.5% is still pretty high, but for the season he's had, I thought he'd be higher up coming up until up until a double game week. 16 goals, 3 assists so far this season. He started every single game, 31 games. Um, yeah, he's had a great, great season. Bournemouth have actually been not bad this season. Um, they won three in a row. And then um, the game week in 32, they did lose to Luton. But um, Solanke's form hasn't been, I guess, of best lately. Um, he's blanked two weeks in a row. But even and then before that, he scored two in a row. And then before that, he blanked three weeks in a row. So you could say he's only scored two in um, seven game weeks, which is true. But um, I think this double game week can be a nice chance for him to get back on the scoring sheet. Albeit they are tough away games, Villa and Wolves. But I do fancy... Um, Bournemouth to score in at least one of them games and I think Solanke is probably going to be their main threat for that 7.3 million as well very nice price and yes like I said he's almost 30% owned but um, I think that's still pretty low for a person that's been consistently scoring throughout the whole season um, for me there are other options for Bournemouth but I don't really fancy them to keep a clean sheet in either of the game or either of them games so Nessie's come back from injury now um, you've got Zabani, but which is like defensively, but I don't think Bournemouth defenders are the way to go. Um, Semenyo's had a bit of a knock. He should be back, but not too sure. Tavernier, hamstring injury. Um, so for me, it only really leaves Solanke, and I probably wouldn't go for anyone else from Bournemouth just because of the fact I can't see them keeping a clean sheet and there's no one really out there in terms of attacking-wise that I'd want to go for. So overall, if you're going to get a Bournemouth player, I think go for Dom Solanke. So Palace are probably going to be the most popular transfer in this game week because their double game week is two home games. And it's two home games that are not the worst. I think West Ham can see goals and Newcastle can see goals in terms of attacking-wise. But and even defensively, I think um, a Palace defender could be a nice option to go for. I have picked Eze, though, so 6 million, 3.2% owned. Um, probably not had the most amazing season because of injuries but he started 18 games he's got six goals three assists which is nine returns so a return every other game is pretty good he's obviously on pens he's on free kicks potentially if Elise is not in the team um he should be in the team though so he's probably not on all three kicks but he'll be on corners etc and I do think Eze is the best option just because of I do think he's on pens. There is an argument to go for someone like Mateta or even um, Elise, as I've mentioned. Elise, I'm a bit worried as he's just come back from injury. Um, he got 16 minutes in game week 32. Um, and yeah, he got a few more minutes, or he should get a few more minutes in game week 33. But for me, although he's cheaper, 5.6 million, I, and he's got the same returns as Eze, six goals for assists, I just I prefer Eze because um, I just don't trust the fact that he he's going to come back from injury. Um, and he's been injured for most of the season. He's only started eight games this season. So um, for me, I don't think I'd risk Elise. Mateta is an is a option I never thought I'd say I'd be even thinking about. But 5 million, 1.5% uh, owned, seven goals, five assists in 18 starts this season. 
is not bad, but for me, I, I think Eze is the player to go for. I think set pieces, um, he's the he's their best player and he's their main player. And I think if they do anything, it's going to involve Eze. So for me, my Crystal Palace pick, Crystal Palace pick is Eze. Let's get on to the next team. So next up is Everton. So a team with. I'd say a tough double game week. Yes, they've got two home fixtures against their kind of relegation rivals, Nottingham Forest, a must-win game for them, uh, for both teams, to be honest. And uh, Liverpool at home, a derby. I won't be rushing out to get Everton players. Um, I think if you're on maybe a free hit, then I'd probably have one um, because I think that Forest at home game and even the Liverpool game, I think can be not bad for Everton. In terms of attacking-wise, I wouldn't go for any of their players. Calvert-Lewin, absolutely not. Injury prone. Um, and yeah, just not that great. Yes, he scored in 31-32, but I just don't trust him, um, to be honest, to do the business. Brantthwaite, 4.3 million. Um, two goals this season, but again, I'm not too sure. Um, I think there are better defenders out there to go for in terms of double game week. We've got the Arsenal defenders. We've got one that we're going to talk about next as well from Everton's rivals. But for me, I think Pickford can be a nice option to go for. 4.7 million, 13.2% owned this season. He's done pretty well. He's Everton's highest scorer, um, 113 points. In terms of goalkeepers, he's up there. He's, he's the top goalkeeper as well, point scoring. Um, clean sheets as well. I'm pretty sure he's top of the clean sheets. I'll just get that out now. Okay, so David Raya has got 12 and then Pickford with nine on second. So... Um, yeah, he, he's he's up, he's up there as one of the best goalkeepers in terms of FPL. And I think two home fixtures, um, one game relegation, they're going to want to keep it tight, nick a goal. Second game, they're going to want to stop Liverpool from winning the league. So for me, I think it can be a nice double game week for Everton. And I think they're going to be overlooked a lot. Um, and I think Pickford can be a nice pick that you know he's going to get save points even if he doesn't keep clean sheets. So, um, and with double game weeks, that can rack up and get you bonus, etc., etc. So overall, I do think Pickford is the best Everton option. I don't think there's anyone else I'd go. Maybe a defender, but I think Pickford's save points just edges someone like Brownthwaite or Mialenko. Let's get on to the next team. So with Liverpool's array of attacking options... It was hard not to go for Salah, Diaz, Darwin, which they're all great options, and especially Salah, but Salah is probably the obvious option. I wanted to give you something a little bit different. You know Salah's going to be a good option in a double game week and potential triple captain option if you still have the chip. But for me, I've gone for Virgil van Dijk. I think Liverpool defensively did start the season pretty well. Yes, recently they haven't done it. The last time they kept a clean sheet was game week 27. Um, but I think van Dijk is a player that can get on the score sheet. Um, two goals, two assists this season. It's, it's a massive, massive double game week for Liverpool. Um, two away games, one against their rivals, uh, one against Fulham, who are in decent form at the minute. And to be honest, obviously I'd rather Trent, but I just don't think Trent's going to start both games. I think Bradley's uh, an adequate, more than adequate replacement for him. I think Bradley will get one of them games. Um, Trent's obviously just come back from injury. Robertson, I don't think, is attacking enough to, to warrant going for him. I think Van Dijk from set pieces is probably a bit better than than Robertson maybe getting assists, etc. And then, obviously, Van Dijk's partner, you, you don't really know who it is. Canate, Gomez, uh, Konza, could be could be anyone. So, for me, I think Van, Van Dijk is the safe pick. And, obviously, you could go Kelleher, but I think Alisson will be back. So, I do think Van Dijk is the safe pick. 6.6 .6 million, 21.5% owned. Um, this season, he has had a great season to be honest one of I guess the best players in the league he has led that Liverpool team through injury through um, international duty where Salah was off and a few other players were off he has been a rock and back to the I guess the great Van Dyke we have seen in the past what six six seasons um, and I do think he is the best defensive option to go for if you are looking for a Liverpool defender. Obviously, I do think Salah is the best option. Um, I just didn't think it was necessary to talk talk about him. I think if you don't own Salah, get a Salah. Second best, I actually think Van Dijk is second best. Yes, Diaz, Darwin, Gakpo, Jota are all options, but I think the fact that they're all options is the, is the reason why I haven't gone for him in this video. I think... As a third option, yeah, I think Darwin should play both games. I think probably Diaz should play both games. But the fact that Jota is back now and the fact that um, Gakpo looked a little bit better 
um, in their game against Man United-ish. But um, yeah, for me, I think Van Dijk's a safe pick. I think Salah Van Dijk and then you can go for a little punt of maybe someone like Diaz or Darwin. So if you don't own Van Dijk, I do think he is the best Liverpool option to go for. Let's get on to the next team. So next up is Sheffield United and... <laughs> this was a complete struggle to be totally honest with you I know they got a draw against um, they got a few draws recently to be honest draw against Chelsea Fulham and Bournemouth in the last four <sighs> and it is a struggle to be honest to pick a Sheffield United player but I have gone for Bereton Diaz um, he's come in in January and he's kind of hit the ground running seven starts four goals one assist um, so five returns for a Sheffield United side that are probably well they are the worst team in the league at the minute Um it was a tough pick, but for five million, if he did want to go for a differential, potentially on a free hit, I probably won't be bringing him in if you had transfers because the fixtures after are not the best. Um, but if they are going to stay up, they're going to have to beat Burnley in a double game week and potentially get a result against Man United. Okay, they can potentially lose to Newcastle, but they're going to have to beat Forest and they're going to have to beat Everton in game week 37. And to do that, they're going to have to score goals. And I think Diaz is probably their biggest threat. 5 million, 0.2% owned, so a massive differential if you did want to go for him. Maybe you're chasing rank, maybe you're chasing a mini league rival, maybe you, you've just had enough of FPL this season and you want to go for someone different. I think Diaz can actually do well, to be totally honest with you. I don't know if you remember, maybe if a month ago, I did recommend someone like Fafana at Burnley and then he went and smashed it over the next two to three games. So uh, I do have a habit of doing that with these players. Diaz, on the other hand, I probably wouldn't trust as much as I did for Fana, but for five million with them fixtures and a double game week, if they're going to do it, he's going to be part of it. And I think it potentially could be worth a pick as an eighth attacker, maybe someone that you can rely off off the bench after after the double game week. So for me, I wouldn't be rushing out to bring in Diaz, but if you're going to go for a Sheffield United option, if you want to go for a differential and you've kind of had enough of the season, you just want to try and get as high as possible um, and do something different, then I think Diaz could be an option. Don't tell anyone else, though. Let's get on to the next team. So last but not least, we've got Wolves. It was a tough one with Wolves. Who to, who to pick in this in this video? Obviously, you've got the attacking threat of Sarabia, um, who's done well recently and a cheap price. You've got Juan coming back from injury. You've got Cunha back, back as well. Um, Neto, probably not going to be back in time. Um, out Nori, who should be back from injury by then. Um, but I've gone for someone like Craig Dawson. Um, for me, Craig Dawson screams retro FPL. I don't know how many people have played FPL for, for a few years now, but I'd say probably seven, eight, nine years ago, um, players like Craig Dawson were, 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 the, were the players to go for. Um, your big defenders like maybe John Terry or Rio Ferdinand or because um, attacking fullbacks weren't really a thing back then, I'd say. You had Ivanovic who did pretty well, um, but attacking fullbacks weren't that common. So goal-scoring defenders from teams like Wolves, teams like Palace, teams like Fulham were basically essential. Um, and I think it could be the return of defenders like this. I remember owning someone like Breda Hangelan. Um, you had defenders like Christopher Samba for uh, Blackburn. That uh, will just get on the end of things. And then Craig Dawson is a very, very good goal scoring defender. Yes, he's only got one goal, one assist this season. Um, and even last season, it was one goal, one assist. But before that, two goals, three assists, three goals, two goals, two goals, one assist, four goals, four goals. Um, so he's due another goal at least. And to be honest, I think he can do it in this game. 4.5 million, 0.6% owned. And Wolves' fixtures, even after double game week, they've got obviously Arsenal at home, Bournemouth at home, but then they've got Luton at home. Then Man City away, okay, that's tough. But then they've got Palace at home in 37. So some nice fixtures after that that maybe you can bring in Craig Dawson. We know how good he is airily. Um, he is due a goal, I think. And if you are looking for a Wolves defender and out Nori, you're not worth, you don't want to risk it with him. Um, and you want to go for a bullet header, someone that's going to get you a bullet header potentially. And I think Craig Dawson could be the guy. Let me know what you think in the comment section below on all my picks. Let me know what chances you're making for double game week 34. 
please, please, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 2K before the end of the season. It's a big ask, but I can't do it without you, and I do need your help on that. And please, please like the video, and good luck for the game week.